Good morning, Year 6, and welcome to Thursday's Literacy Lesson. You're going to start off with a spelling activity this morning. And what you're going to do is you're going to be creating anagrams for each of the words in your list. To see if you get me scratching my head trying to work out which of the words your anagrams represent. So you'll need your purple book and you'll need something to write with. Now remember, an anagram is where you use all of the letters in the word, but you jumble the order of the letters up. So for example, if I use the word elegant, I can create an gel. Whoops. E. Let's try that again, Mrs. Evie. I don't know what happened with that E. So can jelly. There we go. Okay, so I've got all of the letters of elegance there, but I've got them in a slightly different order. So it gets me thinking, oh, what could that word mean? So we can see if you know exactly how to spell your words correctly. So purple book, something to write with. See if you can really make me puzzle over your anagrams. Have fun, Year 6. Pause the video. Okay, looking forward to seeing lots of interesting anagrams of your word list uh, words this, uh, this morning. Okay, so now we're going to move on to our handwriting. And we're looking at the letter M this morning. So I've used some of the words that I have found with the letter M from your reading text that we're going to be looking at uh, in a short while. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to join the letters and then what you're going to do is underneath your anagram work, you're going to do two lines of mountain, two lines of important, two lines of removed, two lines of humbled and two lines of slammed. So here we go. So I'm going to lead into my M, then into my O, U, nice tall T, A, I, N, and then I can dot and cross. And I keep saying we need to make sure these lowercase letters are exactly the same height and they need to sit on the line. Okay, then so we've got important. So I lead into the I, then the M, T, O, R, T, A, N, and then finally T. And we can go back and do all the dotting and crossing. And look, my P is sitting on the line and um, you can see the descender going down. Okay, so then <coughs> removed is the next one. So we lead into the R, E, into the M, O, V, E, D. Okay, nice and uh, uniform size of the lowercase letters. Then I've got humble. Humble means that, uh, you know, you, you, you haven't got ideas above your station. You, 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 you know, you're a nice, you're a kind person. Okay, so then we've got the lowercase letters, the same height, and we've got the ascenders the same height as well. And then finally, we've got two M's in slammed. So remember, it's important to get that S the right height, the same height as the other letters. So F, nice tall L, A, M, into my next M, E, and then D. Okay, so slammed there. So underneath your anagrams, two lines of mountain, two lines of important, two lines of removed, two lines of humble, and two lines of slammed. Pause the video, have a go. Okay, <clears throat> so today we're going to be looking at your reading book. We're going to be looking at page 16 and 17. And what we've got there is we've got a myth. Okay, it's a, a Roman myth. And we're going to have a little look at the text and, and look through it fully uh, in just a, a, a moment. But what I want you to do, first of all, is your starter activity. You're going to have a little look at that text on your own. You're going to be word detectives. So the first thing is you're going to find three abstract nouns that are mentioned in the text. So remember, abstract nouns are things that you can't touch. They're ideas, feelings, emotions. All right. Then three proper nouns. Remember, proper nouns need a capital letter. So find me three of those. 
and I want you to find me three words you don't know the meaning of. OK, and um, added to that, find out the meaning. OK, so three words you don't know the meaning of, but then find the meaning. Then five adjectives. So they are those describing words. Then five verbs, the action, the doing words. <coughs> Excuse me. And then finally, can you find a simile in there? So that's where we compare two things. OK, and you very often find the word as or like uh, in there uh, that gives you a clue. It's a simile. OK, so you will need your purple book and your reading book. You're going to turn to page 16. That's where the text is. And then see if you can be word detectives and find me each of the items that I've requested on the list. OK, year six, pause the video and off you go. Right, so I said that we were going to have a little look at the text and that's what we're going to do now. If you have the text in front of you, it's easier for you to follow as I am going through it. At the top, it tells us that the people of ancient Rome believed in lots of different gods and goddesses, and they told lots of stories about them. So this extract from a story is based on a myth by a very famous poet called Ovid. and uh, He lived in ancient Rome about 2000 years ago. And what it does is it focuses on Jupiter who is the king of the gods, and his son Mercury, who was the, the messenger god. He would zip round and pass messages on from Jupiter to humans uh, or other gods. OK, so let's have a little look at the text then. So it says, many centuries ago in the far distant past, Mount Olympus was the home of the gods. On this great mountain, there was no place for sadness, hunger or thirst. Um, three abstract nouns there that I'm sure you've picked up when you were looking through the text as one of the word detective uh, activities. The gods had all they needed and more. OK, they lived a life of luxury and the most delicious feast satisfied their bodies while beautiful music fed their souls. And every day the goddesses would entertain them all with stories of old. So I think the, the, the ancient Roman gods had a, a bit of a cushy life. OK, they, they, uh, they could just enjoy nice food and entertainment and stories. But Jupiter, king of the gods, had grown restless. In this perfect place, there was nothing to do. In other words, he was a bit bored. And he decided it was time to descend from Olympus and visit the people of Earth below. Mercury, he boomed. Mercury, my son, we have an important task to perform. So he's got his, his, his son and they're going to go and uh, in, get engaged in a, in a task. Mercury appeared at his father's side and his eager eyes searched the wise old face. Mercury had great respect for his father and always valued opportunities to please and impress him. Where are we going, father? What shall we do? It's time we tested the kindness of those on earth. We shall visit the people of Phrygia. If they pass the test, then all shall be well. Okay. If they fail the test, then they'll learn the hard way that unkind behaviour provokes the anger of the gods. It's a little bit sort of like the story in the Bible of, of Noah and the flood. Uh, people had angered God and he was going to teach them a lesson. And those people who listened to Noah and tried to change their ways, they would be saved on the ark, along with the animals and those that didn't listen. Well, they were going to be flooded. Okay. So Mercury nodded and rose at once. He removed his magical winged sandals, which let him fly as fast as the wind. And both gods put on old tattered clothes. So they're in 
disguise. Um, so, you know, uh, uh, that's very often what the gods did is they would uh, go in disguise and then they'd be able to see exactly how people uh, reacted to them uh, to decide whether they were good or bad. Jupiter set off with a slow, painful limp and Mercury barefooted followed behind him. So they, they don't look like gods anymore. They perhaps look like beggars. Okay, walking into the, 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 the city of uh, Phrygia. Mercury and Jupiter arrived in Phrygia, looking like two humble travellers. They started their task wearily knocking, sorry, knocking wearily on each door that they found. So they're looking, you know, the part, they're looking tired um, and they're, they're knocking on the door. And what they're doing is asking for water. So it says, could you spare us a drink of water, please? Asked Mercury. We have no food and nowhere to go, cried Jupiter. But the people of Phrygia slammed their doors in the gods' faces and paid no attention to their pleas for help. So it's not looking good for Phrygia at the moment because nobody is helping um, the two gods in disguise. At last. Mercury and Jupiter turned in despair to a lone, lonely shack which cowered and bowed its straw head. So it's a really poor looking um, shack, a, a little hut. Okay, you can see a little picture of it. it you know, it's, it's almost falling down. Um, so obviously the people inside have not got much at all. Um, drawing, sorry, quivered in the gentle breeze. Drawing near, uh, sorry, it was the smallest house they'd seen so far, and the walls quivered in the gentle breeze. So it really is, you know, it's on its last legs, it's going to fall apart. Drawing near, they saw a couple inside, so uh, uh, two people inside. The man, Philemon, and his wife, Baucis, turned their heads at the sound of the knock. Philemon hurried over to answer the door. Please, would you let us sit for a while? We are tired and hungry and have travelled far. Philemon's face broke into a welcoming smile and he beamed at the visitors. Why, of course, strangers, please enter our home. So they've knocked on countless doors Doors have been slammed in their faces and they finally arrived at what looks the poorest and smallest uh, ha dwelling or house in the entire place. And the people in there, even though they've obviously not got a lot of money at all, they uh, immediately welcome them and say, come on in, come on in, which is uh, might just save Phrygia. We shall see. OK, so you've got some questions to answer and I want you're going to do all of the questions except uh, six because I want to do a little bit of a challenge and you are going to um, uh, use uh, elements of, of question six to do that. So are you surprised, question one says, that Jupiter wanted to leave Mount Olympus? OK. So that's asking your opinion. So there he is. It's absolutely perfect. He wants for nothing. He's got food. He's got uh, entertainment. It, you know, the, the, it's, the sun always shines. It's an amazing place to live. So aren't you surprised that he wanted to leave Mount Olympus? So there's no right or wrong answer to this. So you might say, uh, Yes, I'm surprised because everything in Mount Olympus is perfect. The weather, the food, the entertainment, he's got no worries. He can, Jupiter can do what he likes. Or you might take the opposite view and say, no, I'm not surprised because the place is really, really perfect and he's got nothing to do. So, you know, he's got bored and he wants to, to, to get a bit of excitement because, you know, otherwise... Um, you know, every day is the same. So you can decide which sort of, uh, you, know, you know, which side of the fence you are on for that. Okay.
So then, um, why do you think, question two, Mercury left his sandals behind when he and Jupiter went to work? So if we turn back to the text, it tells us here that um, he removed, where it says line uh, 14, Mercury nodded and rose at once. He removed his magical wing sandals, which let him fly as fast as the wind. And both gods put on old tattered clothes. So, if he's, you know, people would know that Mercury, the god, wore wing sandals. I don't imagine there's many people walking around on Earth with wing sandals at this time. So maybe that is, um, it might be that he took them off as a bit of a, a you know, because it's a get, a, you know, it's a, it's a, a giveaway who he is because he's got these tattered clothes, but then he's got these sandals on. Uh, you might think, well, they make him uh, go as fast as the as the wind. So perhaps he wanted to look like he was a weary traveller. So you have a little think, see what you think about that answer. Then you're summarising what happens in line 17 to 22. So 17 to 22, um, if I have a little look here, so um, you've got Mercury and Phrygia, uh, uh, Jupiter arrived in Phrygia. So they knock on, on the doors and they ask people, but they, uh, they, nobody helps them. So you are sort of summarising that in, uh, uh, in the little section here. OK, you need a bit of detail in there because it's two marks. Then bowed its straw head in line 24. So what's that an example of? So you've got onomatopoeia, simile, personification and alliteration. Now we've talked about similes. So can you see as or like in there? Onomatopoeia. Now remember, those are those sound words. So when you say them, they they sound like the, the action they're trying to describe. So we go back to buzz. OK, so you can hear bees, bees buzzing. You can hear the sound um, as the, uh, you know, that we're, we're describing. Then personification. Um, that's when you're giving something that isn't alive human qualities. OK, so um, can a roof bow its straw head? Is that what it, is that what it's doing? OK, and then you've got alliteration. OK, is the last one. So do each of the words in that particular phrase or more than one of the words in that particular phrase, do they begin with the same letter of the alphabet? Like we had fluffy feathers in the uh, extract that we, we looked at from the RSPCA about bir baby birds. OK, so have a little think. Which one of those do you think is the best? Uh, is, 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 you know, ref is the example. OK, which one of those types of figurative language? OK. So then you've got to write down the final one, two features of the text that show it's a myth. So a myth is where um, you tend to, it tends to be set. Um, it could be set on, uh, in, in the heavens. It can be set on the earth. It can be set in the underworld. You can have magical creatures in there. You can have immortals like gods and mortals uh, like human beings in there. And it tends to be something that, that, that happens. Um, you know, the, the, there may be some kind of adventure or some kind of task that's set. So have a little look and see what do you think are two features in the text? Read it through again and see what two things tell you that it is a myth. OK, so then I said we're not going to do question six because I've got a challenge. And this is what I want you to do. You're going to write a little paragraph in your purple book you're going to say what you think happens next so is jupiter treated kindly by philemon so does he get his water is he offered food is he offered lodgings for the night you know is is philemon a really really kind person and then how is philemon punished or rewarded so if he's not kind how is philemon punished and maybe phrygia as well 
Um, or how is he rewarded? So what do you think? What? How do you think Philemon and his wife, Baucis, how do you think they... Um, uh, do they think they treat Jupiter and Mercury really, really well and look after them? And so as a result, Jupiter thinks, right, well, OK, because Philemon is really kind, I'm going to get, make, you know, give him a, a, a fantastic place to live and I'm going to make sure he never has to go hungry again. Or, or do you think that... Um, uh, he saves the whole of Phrygia because of that and makes it a rich, nice town and uh, Philemon is treated really well with that. Or do you think Philemon is treated really well and Phrygia, the people who slam the door in Jupiter's face are, are, are punished? So what do you think happens next in the story? I want you to write me a little paragraph to tell me how you think this story, this myth ends. And I shall really look forward to seeing what you think happens. Have a lovely Thursday and I shall see you tomorrow for our last day of home learning. Hurrah! We will be back to normal, back in school and it will be lovely next week. Okay, see you tomorrow everybody. Bye, have a lovely day.